Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So in this video we'll be making the laser engraver slash PCB maker that you have hopefully seen in my previous video. Uh, if I get it to work that is. <laughs> so what I will be using this laser engraver for is to make printed circuit boards. And I have a UV laser here that I can use to expose the photoresist on the circuit board. So that will eliminate the step of making a film and uh, getting a UV light box and put it in and expose it, get it out. And With this I can just put the PCB in the machine. Uh, it needs to be in a dark room of course still. And then uh, put the file on an SD card and hit print and it will expose the PCB and I can take it, develop it, etch it. I have seen that some people try to do it with their 3D printer, so they will attach the laser to the print head and put the PCB on the build plate and then they will raise it to the correct height and they will start uh, etching it. And this could probably work fine but then you need to generate some kind of a decode to control the printer. And at least I don't have a very easy solution for that. So instead I want to build a dedicated machine to do this and it's going to be controlled by an Arduino. I will write some software for the Arduino that can read from an SD card and it will take a bitmap file and then it will scan the file and uh, expose the areas uh, where the traces are. And we need an option to invert it of course depending if you use positive or negative uh, photoresist. So in this video we will make the hardware and the mechanical parts and then in another video we'll take a look at the software. So I went and drew up an XY plotter uh, kinda like the top part of my 3D printer uh, but it's modified a little bit. I made it so that the shafts don't get pressed into the holes but they instead get locked like that. And then for the sliders that go on here I experimented with making uh, bushings into the plastic instead of using linear bearings. I wouldn't recommend this for uh, routers or something like that that takes a lot of load and perhaps not even for a 3D printer. But for something like this that takes no load at all, just the weight of these uh, shafts, I think it will be okay. Uh, and I went and, and sanded them so that they fit nicely on here without any play, but they're not very hard to move. I didn't want this machine to be big and bulky so I tried to uh, make the parts as compact as possible. So these shafts will go on here and this one on the bottom like that. I still need to sand these a little bit so that they seat uh, correctly into the radius here. Right now there is a, a little bit of, oh, a lot of play in this actually. But that will go away once these gets uh, sanded down. But I think you can see how this is going to work now. Uh, this is the x-axis and uh, back and forth here. Oops. Back and forth with this one will be the y-axis. And we'll have a motor going in here with a pulley on this side and a belt that grabs this part. And then we'll have a bearing with a shaft in here. And I decided to put a motor in the other side as well so that we don't have any shafts going in uh, this direction. 
To begin with, I wanted to make it just like the 3D printer I made. But that would require a shaft going all the way through here. We would need bearings in these. Um, also bearings in these, either a small shaft in each side, and two bearings, or a long shaft and at least one bearing in each side. Doing that would make the whole thing more complex. Uh, the parts would be bigger, and I would have to buy a shaft an extra belt going to the motor that had to sit somewhere and uh, all that was actually more expensive than just hooking up another motor. So I'll go and finish all these parts and uh, I'll come back when we are about to assemble it. So what I need to do is sand the corners of these brackets a little bit so that the shaft will fit nicely into the hole there. So I went and, and sanded them, so now the shafts fit a little bit better. I think we will start by assembling the Y carriage and then we can assemble the X axis afterwards. It looks like I need to sand this a little bit more. It gets very snug in here. It's better, but we need a little bit more. So I think it's okay now, but as you can see the problem is it's a little bit looser over here than it is over here. Uh, and if I really press this, it gets a little bit better, but uh, I need to sand just a little bit off this part right here. So I think I got everything uh, a little bit better now. And now we will screw this end on. So I should have put the bearings into here before I screwed it on because the shafts are actually sticking up above this uh, piece of plastic here. But uh, I can just uh, put something against the bearing and then press it in the vise. And I'll uh, go and do that one for each side here. So like this. It actually didn't matter that I screwed it together because uh, this fit nicely into the vise so I could just clamp it like this. Now we just need to put the motor in here and uh, add the belt and then the Y carriage is done. So I was having a hard time screwing this one in. <laughs> And then the limit switch for the homing should attach to this block here. And that will then hit the stepper motor once it moves all the way to the end. It's very close to the plastic there but it clicks before the gap is closed. So. But I might have to bend the arm a little bit to get just a millimeter. <laughs> and then the actual laser goes onto here and uh, it attaches with a little bracket around there and a few screws and that's it. I wanted this to be easy to remove uh, and I want to put a plug on it. And, uh, perhaps I'll get a more powerful laser uh, so that I can uh, cut paper and engrave in plywood and stuff like that. 
it won't be much engraving uh, but it should be enough to uh, make it black or brown uh, if I use a more powerful laser diode but for the PCBs I want to use the weak one uh, to make sure I don't burn the photoresist so I just went and did another test fit here and uh, now we can actually measure how much travel we get so a bit more than 15 it's actually 15.8 centimeters in the X direction and I just noticed that I got these back to front and in the Y direction we get 21 centimeters so it is capable of the 20 by 15 that I wanted it to so I think we are ready to start putting it onto the base now I just went and screwed the other motors into the brackets and for the base I'll be using this piece of wood here that has been sawn off from the table so I'll put this off to the side here and uh, we have room for the electronics over here So once we have gotten all the tops on here, I can go and screw down one end while the uh, carriage is at this end. That will put the uh, shafts here uh, at the correct spacing so it won't bind up. Once we have uh, put these screws in, we can move the carriage to this end and put the screws in here and hopefully everything will be aligned. So now it's fixed in place. It is a little bit harder than uh, if we used uh, linear bearings, but uh, it's easy enough that the motors will be able to pull it. So I'm just uh, tapping the holes for the belt holders because I have to uh, put the screws in from the bottom. So I don't know what I was thinking when I made this because there's not enough room for the Allen wrench uh, underneath here. So I went and tapped these to 5mm instead and then I'll drill these up to 5mm and then put the screw in from the top. So now we can go and install the belts and uh, first we need to fasten the pulleys And the one on the x-axis here is the easy one. Well, I take that back, actually. 
Yeah, the other ones were far easier to adjust. And now we can install the y-axis end stop onto this block here. So I think that's all the mechanical things in place, except for the top part of uh, the x-axis block here. I'll have to sand those a little bit uh, on this side here because they don't quite uh, uh, reach the shaft here. They are a little loose. But I'll do that later, it, uh, it works fine without. So now I think we can do the electronics. And I went and made a PCB for it. And we need to control two stepper motors, so I made room for two stepper drivers here. And we'll use the ones uh, from the ramps board used to make 3D printers and stuff, CNC machines. And they fit right in here. Like that. And this header you see here is used to set how many micro steps we want. So if they are open we get full steps. And if we want micro steps we can uh, add some jumpers to these. So the motors plug in here, and the SD card reader can plug into this header here. I haven't received those yet, I just ordered them, but uh, I have an LCD module that has a card reader, so I'll uh, put some jumper wires across to that so we can test it. Here we have the output for the laser, and I calculated a dropper resistor for that for a 5 volt supply. We have a transistor for it, and the base goes to an output pin on the Arduino. Then we have the two home switch inputs, or the limit switches here. And we have a 12 volt input. And then of course on the back here we have the connector for the Arduino. And uh, hopefully it will fit. <laughs> so, it's going to look like that. And then we can uh, put the SD card into the reader. Uh, once I get that. <laughs> And there's plenty of room to mount the board over here. <laughs> and I can even mount the power supply permanently on here if I want to. So I will have to extend the wires of the motor here. So I'll just solder some, uh, some extra to it. So I went and added some heat shrink to the wires, and now I will have to connect up the end stops. So I'll just go and see which are the normally open pins. Oh. So the top pin seems to be the common, and then the middle one is the, the normally open. So I'll go and solder wires to these, and also to the other end stop. So I think I'll just go and uh, turn this motor around so the wires come out on the top side here. So I hooked up connectors to all the wires and uh, now it's just a matter of hooking it all up. And there then we're ready to test it. And if you want to know how the software works, make sure to check out the video where I show that. Thanks for watching this video and if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll catch you soon for the next one. See ya!